this session so you can watch it again and it'll be available on the Humber Growth website. You'll get a copy of the slides and if you uh, would like to say anything on social media, please feel free to do so. And as always, any SME in the Humber region, there's the opportunity to have uh, some free marketing help. So if you'd like someone to give you some advice, then that is available. Just drop me a line and we can organize that for you. Right, we have the same format every week. We've got to, uh, we'll have a little quiz and uh, we'll also get into the, uh, the main thing. Actually, I'm feeling quite sort of, um, I've got a good mood today. I must confess a good mood. I went down to go down to the local town and somebody complimented me on my, uh, on my driving. When I got back to the car, the little note was on it saying parking fine. So that was really good. And when I came home, when I came home, I, um, I uh, rang up a local building company. I said, um, uh, can, I, um, can I skip outside? I have a skip outside my house. I said, I'm not stopping you. Right, let's move on. Let's move swiftly along. And so, without, right, all about Google. Hey! All about Google. Now, have you got your pen and paper ready? Pen and paper ready. We've got a quiz on the chat line. Actually, I was taking. A, I just did this. This is the last webinar uh, and last Zoom meeting I was on, so uh, I thought I'd just um, share that with you uh, today. And I, I do have the authority today. So, right, let's move on. First question on on today's quiz: True or false? Google's original name was Backrub. True or false? What does the chat line say? Oh, Kevin. By the way, happy Lunar New Year to you, Kevin. It is a different opinion here. It was true. My goodness. There you are. There's the evidence to show how things derive. Question two. Yeah, you can get very expansive this one. The name. Google was a misspelling. True or false? Ooh. What have we got here on the chat line? Ooh. Hey, just one for true. It was true. It was a derivation of, oh, I can't even pronounce it, Google, which I think, if you remember rightly, is a very large number and was the was the final question when Major Charles won his million on Who Wants Millionaire? There we go. A little bit of trivia for you. Right, here we go. Another one. Bit of Google rents 200 goats. I'm not kidding. Uh, uh, Google rents 200 goats to mow the weeds around at their headquarters. True or false? You know, light relief, isn't it, to get the game going? What have we got here? Oh, goodness gracious. Why is everyone saying false today? Rent on the goats, it, oh, come on. Of course it's true. As you do, environmentally friendly and all that kind of stuff. Who needs a lawnmower when you've got a goat? Right, do you know who they are? Anyone know who they are? Oh, that'll get you on the old chat line. Let's try that one. Anyone? I'm surprised you get that right. Yes, right, Michael and Sal. You can, you're not allowed. You cheat on the founders of Google. Half a point. Half a point. Half a point. Sergey and Larry. No less. Ask me which is which, but I think you find that Larry is on the left. I'm sure you're looking, of course. 50 50. And you know, here's the next one. When Larry Page and Sergey Brin met at Stanford, Brin was asked to show him round the round. The, um, around the school. True or false? Is that how they met? What have we got here on the old chat line? What have we got? It, yes, Dave, Hannah, it is. It is indeed true. I think it was Mark Zuckerberg met his wife in a queue. Yeah, yeah. Last time I saw my wife was in the divorce court. No, I'm only joking, only joking. Right, let's move on. Uh, do you know, here I go. Larry and Sergey's private plane, the special runways in NASA, in Houston, where no one other plane is allowed to land. There you go. That's what happens when you've got a rather large bank balance. Here we go. 
question for I don't go on, we'll get on to the main event in a minute. Google owns a pet T-Rex named Colin, which has been placed at their California headquarters. True or false? You can't write this. You can't write this. Oh, we've got a difference here. Well, we've got various opinions. You've got true and false. Yeah, the owner of Pet T Rex called Colin. We're going to let a couple of people in. Just give me a second. Full house today. So, is that true or is that false? Well, it's actually false. It's false, Stan. <laughs> and to prove there he is, there's Stan next to his laurel. And so there you are. There you are. So, it's funny what. Do you know why I've got a dinosaur there? Do you know why? Yes, yes, because they can't afford it. Uh, but secondly, uh, it's because they didn't want, they wanted it always to be a symbol of the fact they didn't want their company to be extinct. Well, hey, there you go. Right, so Google has been acquiring businesses, more than one company every week, every week since 2010. So they are a massively acquisitive business. And you know, a great company to work for. You're only know a few feet away from food. Wouldn't that be great, wouldn't it, to work somewhere like that? But they also perform a very vital public service, one could argue. So if you were in a particularly uh, difficult situation and you typed that in, I want to commit suicide into Google, it automatically brings up help an online chat. So you know, there's a lot to be said. Um, for some of the uh, positive things that can, can come and the help that can be provided. You can also have some quirky products as well. Uh, have you, who's ever used, I prefer, uh, prefer um, this to, uh, to Bruno, but has anyone ever used Google Mars? Google Mars, all the maps and everything you wanted to know. Three spaceships on the way to uh, Google Mar Mars as we speak, actually, yeah. Yeah, it, you know, it, Sal, Sal likes it. Well, it certainly helps me work, rest, and play. And uh, so the ne next on our list, have you had, don't use Google Mirror. Anyone, anyone, I thought I'd put that in uh, here just on reflection. Yeah, bit fun with, you can have with, uh, with Google Mirror as well. So all in all, um, Google has 250 products and a rather large number of users. And I'm not going to go through all 250 because we've only got a short amount of time together. So today is a whistle stop tour through some of the, uh, the Google products that I think you uh, may help. And we're going to start here. Google Alerts. Now, has anybody used Google Alerts? Let's have a quick check on the chat line. Anyone using Google Alerts? Not, if not, oh, there is, there is, what have we got? Yes, we have quite a few. So that's great. Well, I'll just, we're going to show you Google Alerts. So what Google Alerts simply is, is keyword monitoring, you get mentions delivered in your inbox. And it is, <laughs> fairly realish time. But the beauty about using Google Alerts is that it'll take away a lot of the idea about searching online. You can actually tailor make your searches. Now here on the screen in front of your very eyes is how you set up alerts. Very easy to do. So, and without further ado, without the aid of a safety net, this is where I keep my fingers and my toes crossed. We're going to hopefully come up on the screen. And there you are. We'll do a live alert. Now, anybody on the chat line would like us to do a little search for any particular topic. And we'll set one up. If no, there's no takers, I'm just going to choose something at random. I'll wait for a moment. You can't see this. Well, that's not a very good start, is it? Binoculars. Does anyone see that? Can you see the screen? Thumbs up if you can see the anyone see, can you see the screen? Is the Google on the screen? Yep, on the screen, hopefully. Right, so I'm just going to do this at a random thing. So I'll set up an alert. Now, one of the worst ways is to put things in inverted commas. 
So I'll just type in Hull City Count Council in inverted commas, and there you are. You create. Simon, yep. Simon, sorry, sorry to bother you, but no one can see that because you're still on the share screen with the Google Alert image. So. Sorry, 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 sorry. Thank you, Sal. Thank you for interrupting me. How do you have? Not. Me. I was enjoying myself as well. Right, let's start the screen again. Thank you very much. I'll remember that for next time because we're going to show a little bit. Right, can you see that? Has it come up on the screen? Ooh, has it come up? The Google screen? Yeah, got the Google alerts. Brilliant. Whew. Technology. Right. So I've got, I'm creating an alert and I'll do this here. So I'm just going to, one of the best ways of doing this is to use inverted commas. So I'm just typing in my favorite council, Hull City Council, in inverted commas. And then I will press create alert. And you can see, if I go, we created it there and go on to edit it. See that little edit? So you can set it up once a day, get automatic sources, you can see, you can also get blogs, news, etc. in English. You can have it specific for the United Kingdom and update an alert. So every day now at quarter past two, I should get an alert relating to the whole city council. So you can see, you can use it for your competitors, use it for your own company, for any particular topic. I think that Google Alerts is a great way in which to sort of uh, use for a business. You can be creative. Has that come up on the screen, hopefully, back to, back to this presentation? It must work. Does it work? Back to presentation? Yep. So, Google Alerts, free, simple to set up. You can set up as many alerts, I believe. I believe it's largely infinitesimal. And you'll get, a, you, if you're only setting up one, you'll, only, you'll get it at a specific time. I think if you set up more than one, you'll get something called a daily digest. So using Google Alerts is a really good thing to do in terms of searching. It won't cover social media, but it will cover largely Google activities. How to make your alerts more effective. So you're avoiding generic common words. You obviously can do more than one alert. But here is a good example of doing something. So you may think, like, I'm not suggesting it's going to apply, but if there was negative comments, you want to define those that appear on Google, you type in your company name or a, another business name, or whatever it might be, plus various different words that may apply. And if you're looking for very specific things, again, to be creative, You'll type in what you are looking for in inverted commas and then add something on at the end. So tips, ideas. So Google Alerts is a good place. And I would encourage people to use, use the filters as we saw very briefly, news, etc., to go in there. Okay. So we only spend a few minutes on each one. So Google Alerts now. Anybody used Google social search? Mm -hmm. What does anyone think about that? Anyone doing it right now? Nobody on the chat line? It is. Answer the question. All of these are free. Uh, Mihex Reza, is it free? The Google social search. Hopefully it's fairly self-explanatory. I'm going to try the same trick again. I'm going to press this. Let's see if this works. I might have to stop the come out of this presentation and back in again to see if this works. Share my screen again, avoid what I did before, and hopefully that has come up on your screen. Let's hope it has. Yep. Yep. Got the, has that come up? Great. So there we are. The Google social search. Now, it works in not a dissimilar way to Google Alerts. And by you can search, obviously, you can see Facebook, 
TikTok, Instagram, Pinterest, etc. Appear in there. So we're going to do the same thing again. And I'm going to, you know, as if not that I'm obsessed with whole city council. I'll tick it for Facebook, shall I? And I'll tick it for LinkedIn. How about that? And we're going to press search. Again, I'm using the inverted commas. Before we do that, you can see it's quite self explanatory on the screen. Hopefully, you can look for a phrase. If terms you want to exclude, you can minus something or use the word or. And if by magic, it can't be work. It's going to work. It will. Hey! Does that come up on the screen? Now, if it's brought up, you can see I it cleverly brings up the adverts first for um, this. But if you if you just scroll down, you can see it's got mentions relating to Facebook, the whole city council, and also for LinkedIn. And then you just uh, they appear largely in chronological order, and off you go. Again, it's something you may choose to use in terms of what you may do looking for searching. Obviously, it's got its limitations. You can see the number of platforms. Again, it's very useful to bookmark this kind of thing and then search. I would say a reference a non-Google product, which is the likes of, I can't mention this on Google, the likes of Hootsuite or Mention, but they may cover other platforms in terms of real-time social media and things that you can actually engage with but the google social search fits nicely in you with that also using your google alerts so there we go i'm going to stop that search i'm going to start again and we're back to where should we back to next we're back to the um whoa. What's happened here? What's happened here? Let's have a little look. Yes, a bit of a crash. Ooh, let's get back to the presentation. There we go. Can you hopefully see that? We're back on the screen. Okay. So that was number it's like to Alan Freeman. This isn't it for those of you a certain age group. And number one. Google Alerts, Google Social Search. Whoa, hey! Another a little drink now, cocktail hour. Another really good tool to use Google Trends. So what Google Trends is, it works in a not a similar way, but here is um, the place that you can find, find niches for particular products. So here, oh, well, we get to sit up right. Acting posture corrector. As you said, think so you can see it, it, you can set and we'll come on, we'll show you the program in a moment. So you can see that the likes of search for something as very specific as that has shown a complete growth in terms of what's happening in an online search. And then you may go to something very similar. The likes of men's fashion you can see it's very very stable over the period but still a high volume of searches so it's up to you to look towards your type of product and your type of search and to find out whether it's likely to be a fad or not because the likes of fidget spinners obviously is so it's using the google alerts will really help in terms of finding what's happening in terms of people's activity on Google searches. Here is an example, which I'll show you. You can type in something like if you're an online trader with using something like the fake eyelashes, that's what appears when you actually look towards related topics. So you may be involved in selling that or marketing that or blogging about that and other topics appear and you get an idea of what people are searching for. If you know what people are searching for, it will really help in terms of your optimization of your website and in terms of growth of potential products in which you may wish to sell. And you can see they go randomly down 
uh, to King Carnassian or the likes of things like that. But again, if you, if you can tap into something, especially if you are talking on such a subject, and you will may well use the Google Trends for keyword research. So all the things there derived from the likes of the uh, eyelashes also bring up ancillary products. And also looking then for seasonality. So here, a good example, I typed in here, how to fix a bike. And you, you can see where, the, in what month, probably could have guessed some of this, where the likely highest number of searches are. So depending on your particular product or service that you're offering, you may choose to be talking about that, doing special offers online where you'll anticipate where the highest number of trends are. Okay, and quickly, I'm going to try this. I'm going to go back to here. Let's see if we can get this to work as before and show you a live example. I'm going to have to stop the share again, forgive me. Let's see if we can get this going and share the screen. And let's hope it comes up on the screen. Is it going to come up? It has. That is, that is the screen you will see. You can you get an idea really of what is searching right now so this search you can play with that as you as you see fit you get an idea of the typical searches and then you type in your topic you may make it very specific you want, might want to choose up for the united kingdom or go for particular markets if you are global but again and there's lots of good information on here but you'll start to type in the topic and again you may choose inverted commas to use that so google trends it's also a nice little one to use. Right, without further ado, let's move swiftly on to number four. Let's hope this works. We've moved off Google Trends, we've risked through that, and we've arrived at here Google My Business. Yeah. We're going to pause momentarily for anybody who is affect anyone like to volunteer a particular topic or a particular area uh, in terms of um, uh, uh, detail or wherever it might be to look for on Google My Business. And I'll show you how it works. But it is for many businesses if you the, the first port of call in terms of how you would present yourself online. Because Google My Business, Google wants to localize a lot of searches. So it's aiming very much to make people discoverable, particularly to keep people informed. And also it's about confidence because it ties in with reviews and with maps. Now, very simply, some statistics I'm gonna throw you now, that people are more likely to visit businesses with a listing. It's about trust and credibility is, is sways Google and that it's clearly shown that consumers tend to trust online reviews. So let's try a search. So forgive me, I'm gonna go back again. I'm going to go, hopefully to get this to work. Let me share my screen and and I'm going to, we're going to look for something. Let's share a screen. So we've got a lot of windows open. Let's shut one down. Let's open a window. Here we are. Uh, let's go on to, oops, the daisy. Go on to Google. Right, any takers for what type of product? Did anyone mention anything on the chat line? Does that come up on the screen? You've got the you've got a very simple you've got the Google window open yet. Yeah? I hope that's there. Self catering tourism says Sal Compass says B. E. Let me let me try this one. 
I don't think I'm going to type in. I, I did it earlier. Let's see if it works. So I'm going to type in. I hope they come florists near me. Yeah. Can shut that window. Does, does that come up on the screen? Yeah, up on the screen, Tony. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, right. If I can pick. So if I've typed in florists near me, what actually happens? It tends to bring up two things. To start with. It may bring up any results relating to that, but look what's underneath. That is where I'm currently speaking to you from. And it's brought up those three budding businesses. And you are, I know with a fl florist type situation, you may think, well, uh, I'll, I'll just tell me what you think, but I may well for right or wrong dismiss Victoria Ivy in preference to one of the other two. Melanie's has got 36 reviews or a, a very high score as does the flower house and so you'd click on these and it's the way that you would like judge a local business. So it's really imperative for many businesses you know, the florists there you would think that you are judging a business sometimes on its performance. And I'll just try another example. I'll just go for a, I've been dying to do this for a while. Funeral directors. And you can see what happens. Funeral directors near me, it brings up a whole series of ads. So we'll come on to ads in a minute. And there, it brings up three local searches. Now, you, make, you pay your money, you take your chance, but it, 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 it allocates them relative to my location and also relative to the number of reviews and you'll click on accordingly. Now, Google My Business is a fantastic micro site. So I'm going to do this very quick. Hopefully this next screen will open in front of your very eyes. Hopefully that's opened. Give me, it's not intended to be anything egotistical, but I can only show you my, the behind the scenes of my business. We've got a couple of people just about to join. Hang on a second. Let's hope that's worked. Can, is that come up on the screen? A fantastic microsite. You've got the home. I'll just whiz down. You can post. You've got information relating to um, the days you open. You've got insights in what people uh, would look for. You can set up, obviously, answer reviews from here. You can set up messaging. You can create photos, videos, etc. You can sell products and services. And also, you can set up your own website through Google My Business. I would think it's very hard to have a justification not do so not to have a google my business presence and that you've got reviews you've got activity and you can give especially in these difficult moments now whether you're open or closed whether you're online offline click and collect etc and you can see that google is encouraging customers to know about the changes during covid19 but highly recommend you look optimizing and playing with Google My Business. You also notice on the right hand side here that I'm circling, I'll cover it, is that you can also, if you'll re revisit it in a moment, that Google are offering me a credit. So hopefully you can see if you're going to be running any Google ads. Okay. But that is Google My Business. Okay. Whew. Where are we now? Next on the list. Let's go back. What have we got up next? Spider search. Is that going to come up on the screen? Snapped. So what I encourage you all to do with Google My Business is to fill out the profile, put photos in there, post news, encourage reviews. I haven't got time today, but there is a way within Google My Business you can send a link to customers to add a Google review. 
You can also build trust by responding to reviews. I was with a client this morning and they had over 115 unanswered reviews. And if you click on the review on Google, you can share it to Facebook and share it to Twitter. So if you're getting good reviews on Google, you can do that as well. You can answer questions online about parking and all those sort of things. And you can refer, um, you can have ad extensions associated with Google and come onto Google Ads in a moment. So really powerful tool to use and fairly simple to use, which moves nicely on Google Ads. Now, time is short today, and in a two weeks' time uh, or so, we're going to be running a, uh, a, um, a, one of our webinars all about Google and online advertising. So this is a very much a whistle-stop tour. Very simple today. I'm just going to make it uh, just a quick insight. There's two ways in which you can principally run advertising with Google. One, as you can see, apologies, the screen is a little blurred, but you can have a, so, uh, a search network. So you are running an uh, advertising to be high up in a Google search. When we did funeral directors near me earlier, you saw that there was about five businesses there who'd advertised. That's to appear in a Google search. You can also run display ads. So they will be put in, as you see in many situations, in an advert. Now, one of the best things to think about doing, and again, we'll cover it in far more detail in a, in a couple of weeks' time, is to think about retargeting. So you, you put pixels into your website, people will visit your website, i.e. They, you're, and you will leave a digital footprint with your cookies, and then you can retarget them. It's all part of the display ads, which will come on to. But very simply, Google Ads is the largest and most widely used online advertising network. So if you want to think, you can spend as little as a pound. But you can see already, if you're onto Google My Business, it's worth thinking about using one of the credits. There's even, you can get a free phone number if you work hard enough. You can actually ring up Google in Ireland and they'll actually help you along in putting, running an advert. You don't have to be super geeky, you can have their help. In, if people know this often as pay-per-click. You bid on keywords, ads are tagged with those keywords, and you're only charged per click, which becomes the idea of pay-per-click. And that you create a simple text, you've got a daily budget, and the key thing with, with Google Ads is that you can monitor the progress. If it works, if it doesn't, and you can turn off the tap, or not. So Google Ads, and it's a fantastic way to advertise online. And as I saw earlier, uh, which I showed, there is credits out there. You can get, you can actually get a little bit of a freebie. Obviously, uh, it sounds nice to get an eighty pound credit, but it's worth giving it a try. Right, as part of Google My, uh, sorry, Google Ads. Is the Google Keyword Planner, which again will package up in a future webinar, but that is a great place to go and it's part of Google Ads. So you'll know what people are searching for the keywords relative to your product or service. So that's the Keyword Planner rolled in to Google Ads. Now, who is familiar? with Google AdSense. Any takers on the chat line? Does anyone know what Google AdSense is? Mm. Nobody? Well, are his secrets. Earn approximately
approximately a thousand dollars a month by blogging and actually having ads within those articles and every time I click every time they click a ching so you can actually have advertising from people clicking on your words and it's all built in with google adsense so again we'll roll that up because time obviously is short today, but worthwhile checking out there's a great little youtube video which lasts about 90 seconds explaining how google adsense works so if you're into blogging you can run ads as part and parcel of that and generate income that way right so Oops, back and forth. Next on our little list, Google Analytics. If you haven't got Google Analytics, I would strongly advise you have one of your, tool, your tools. It is the way it tells you answers this question. How much traffic your website attracts, where your visitors are coming from, and what people do after they get to your site. It's a whole topic in itself. And without further ado, I'm going to click and let's get to show you what Google Analytics look like. Is this going to work? Let's hope it, it does. Just double check. Is that going to come up on the screen? He says, very hopefully. Shut some of these down. Oops. I do apologize, there's lots of windows open. And is it coming up? Oh, oh dear me, it's not going to work. Talk amongst yourselves. Oh, please work. If it doesn't, we'll have to move on because I'm conscious of the time. No. Too many windows opening. Let's shut some windows down. Do apologize, not working. Yeah. So, has that come up on the screen? I hope so. No, you have to accept my apologies. Again, you don't have to be super geek. This is a very, oh dear, I said to my mother, 85, I said, when it gets to about half past two tomorrow, please go on my website. It makes it look like I've got a visitor. She said to me, I will do it. He said, by the way, what's a computer? Anyway, that's moving swiftly along. So this is, a, a, this is what has happened uh, in a day. You can see exactly relating to my particular situation, the number of users, the number of sessions, the bounce rate. Some people often ask what the bounce rate is. It, it's the activity, people only do one thing on the site. But often the, the very the small number of visitors that's happened today here with my particular site come on, look at the front page get information and off they go and you can see right down the side i'll just choose these to look at things like acquisition if you go into acquisition um you can actually see where people have actually visited your site from i hope that loads not having much success with it loading it's taking its time today Oh, is it working? If not, I'm so sorry. We're going to have to move swiftly. There. So, do apologize again for the slight delay, but you get an idea on here of where people are arriving at your site from. So a direct search will be typing the domain name in. The organic search would be looking um, via a more broader search. 
and then businesses approaching socially. You get an idea and then you can click on these different areas and you can see the type of traffic and what's actually coming to your site. We're going to cover this in far more detail, as it says, further down the line, but getting yourself familiar with your Google Analytics. And if you click on the likes of behavior, you can see if people are arriving on one page, what they're doing next and what they're doing next and what they're doing next. And you see that in the likes of a behavior flow. Again, it's a very whistle-stop tour today. So I would recommend highly that you think talk to your, web, uh, your website design or you make sure you've got your Google Analytics set up so you can clearly see. If some of you are on, I know one or two people on the webinar today also use e-commerce platforms. You may think of Shopify and places like that. You want to know where people are coming, about the Smurfs, where are you all coming from? Think about using that information to help you see so analytics and it ties in really well with your google ads so you see about whether how people are you if you're running ads about the behavior and the success and the conversions it's one thing for someone to come to your site but if they're going to buy something you want to know all about that so analytics is essential Right, Mr. Tyson, it's yours end now. Oh, we've got analytics. What's up next? What's up next? We're back to the presentation. We've got the analytics. So, what's going on here? Ooh, what's happening here? Ooh, got the Google Search Console. I don't know what the Google Search Console is. Google Analytics shows you how about your your the behaviour of people visiting your site. Google Search Console will be how Google sees your site and how the search engines see your site. And it's a fixed mentality. You can go onto the Google Search Console, it's free. You type in your domain name and it'll tell you in simplest terms the issues that are wrong with the performance of the website and what needs to be fixed. It's a very simple explanation, but far bigger subject. So the Google Search Console is our next one. And you can tie them all together with the Google Marketing Platform, which you may ever think is an a unified advertising analytics platform so you can fit them together. Your analytics and other things relating to your marketing. So in effect, it's a one-stop shop. So integrating activities and also with the likes of your analytics and your performance of your site. So not that many people use the marketing platform, but it's well worth a visit. What's up next? Who is familiar with a Google product called Blogger? Oh yes, it's here. And the Blogger itself is free, ideal for SEO. It's got templates, it's a robust platform. It's all done and it is the place to go. It, it, many of you may well be um, using the likes of uh, WordPress your website, but the Google um, Blogger is, as its name suggests there, it's where you can create your blog. And you can just skip down this, and you can create perfectly designed of a blog. You get, as its name suggests, you get a free domain. You can earn money. Oh, how do we earn money? Because if you are blogging, and you are on Google Blogger, you could tie that in with Google AdSense. You can have targeted ads on your blog so you can earn money. But if you're thinking about using uh, and doing a lot of content marketing, creating blog, you may wish to put it on Blogger, use Google AdSense, 
and then naturally you may well tie that in with the likes of the analytics to cross refer to your website so this is where a lot of the google products will will, will join up so using blogger and you, is a is a is a tool there for those of you who wish to use it to blog there we go and we're going to be in the we're in the closing straight now because i think we must be getting up to 10 now and after blogger comes what comes after blogger Ooh. it's not it's what's after blogger final few anybody using google groups google groups there we are Oh, that is Google Groups. We can see it on the screen there. It is, it's a forum, it can be a Q&A website, customer support center, a knowledge base, and you can embed it in your website. It's, it's quite common to use this in the US, less so here. But again, you may use that by setting up groups, forums relating to your customers and people inviting there. And again, it may well help naturally Playing the Google game may well assist you with your optimization of your own website. So have a little play with Google Groups. And you can embed that in your website. You can engage with people in your site visitors. The site visitors come to the site, they can see a group and they can participate in that. So that will tie in. And finally, how about the Google Digital Garage. If you want to in, not, uh, improve your skills, go to the Google Garage. You can go on little courses. I spend my evening doing it. No longer Ash Emmerdale. Here you are. I'm on the Google Digital Garage, where I can do quite a bit of learning by that way. So it's great free tools to use. And a Google product, which I think is number 12. Is, don't forget, Google is YouTube is a Google product. And again, for, for those of you creating video, it's fairly self explanatory. It's second biggest search engine. So never forget YouTube. And whew, as promised, in 45, 50 minutes, we've hopefully given you a core of 10 Google tools to use, right? From advertising right through to Google My Business and places to go to search and some of the less used ones like the groups. So what's next? Well, afternoon tea. As I mentioned earlier, if you'd like a little bit of one-to-one -one help, that's available. You'll get a copy of the slides. And what's up next? Well, next week we'll be talking all about Twitter. We'll then follow on with a session all about business-to-business -business marketing. We then will cover all aspects of advertising online. So we'll go into Google Analytics in far more detail, Google Ads, and other places to go, a, a guideline. And then I'll be joined by my colleague, Ryan, who will, in a few weeks' time, have, want you to come to a webinar with your smartphone. I'm going to hopefully teach you how to use your smartphone. Lots of tips for creating online video which will help in hopefully all aspects of your business. So without further ado, I'm going to stop sharing. And I'm going to anybody, I'm going to go look at the chat line. Anyone's got any questions? Sal has said, I think you have to authenticate your Google My Business account and then you can do it. So you do have to authenticate it. So you'd apply for an address. You have a postcard sent to you with a code, and that's how you authenticate your account. Philip has asked, will you do a webinar on MailChimp? We will be, we, we, there is a webinar in place already on email marketing. So we can always forward a link to that where we cover six different tools to use. What's that you? Thank you, Caroline. Any, any other questions for today? If not, just 
on new message. Well, if there's no further questions, I'll hang around for a few moments if anyone wants to have a, have a chat. If not, hopefully you get a little bit of an insight there into lots of different tools. We cover them quite swiftly, so we go away with a few tips and I'll say you'll send you a copy of the slides and also a copy of the recording for those of you who want a second bite of the cherry. If not, without further ado, I'll bid you good afternoon and see you along. Just for those of you left on on the on the call, I think the questions come in about if you've moved address to Google and you can contact them. They are it's a bit of a trial and error, but there are ways in which you can claim an address. So in effect, you can't lightheartedly claim 10 Downing Street in London. That's why the postcard has to come to you. But you can claim an address. If you want to revalidate your account for Google My Business. But I'd really recommend contacting Google directly which you can find through that channel well and you can have more than one address that's right and but not necessarily at the same address i believe no i think it's very difficult to get two businesses at the same address <laughs> 